Okay, so in part one of this lecture, we spoke about cores, the cross-origin resource sharing, and we spoke about where we're going to get the data. That is, we have a Heroku app deployed app that is going to serve as JSON with the data that we need. In this lecture, we're going to go over the code that actually makes the Ajax request to that app, brings in the data as JSON, parses it, and populates an HTML snippet that is then able to be inserted inside of our index.html as the complete set of HTML tags that we need in order to display the menu categories page. The first thing we're going to do is look at a couple of snippets. So as remember, we took out the menu categories.html and we actually substituted them with a couple of snippets. And I separated the menu categories page into two snippets. One is categories title snippet.html. And all it is is just, just a heading of that particular page. Remember the heading two is kind of the subheading already, and it's just going to say menu categories. And the reason I separated that is if you look at category snippet.html, it only has one category or HTML for just one category. And the reason that is is because as we get an array of these categories, we're going to loop over that array, and every time we get a category with this information, we're going to want to populate this little snippet and then make a copy of it and then insert it and keep building up our HTML. So this is what the snippet is about. This is really something that is more like a template. And if you look closely, I place these what they call mustache or these double curly braces uh, that have properties that I'm going to want to insert into this HTML. And there are actually many libraries out there that do this very, very well. But since we don't want to introduce more and more libraries to this course, we're going to just stick to a very simple approach as we're going to have a string, which is this HTML, and we're going to look for this particular string inside of it using the property names and substitute this property name with the actual value. So every time through the loop, we're going to grab these values and substitute these particular property name placeholders, if you will, into the HTML so we can get the real data. So you can see here what I'm doing is in every single menu category, I'm going to create this on click event and I'm going to call this DC David choose load menu items. Well, we're not really going to write load menu items in this lecture yet, but we're going to prep it right now anyway. And what we need here is the short name of our particular category. And if we take a look at the data that we have here, let's open up this again and refresh so we could take a look at the actual data. So if you look at the data here, we have this short name for each category that is going to be very important because we're going to use that to pull out other data from the app. So let's go back to the code editor. And basically that's what it is. It's really nothing more than that. And we have obviously several different properties here that are the same because they show up in different places of the same snippet. Let's go to script.js and see how we're accomplishing that. So first of all, we have some more URLs to deal with, and here I declare them here at the top. One is all categories URL. Well, that's the URL where you could get the JSON from our server-side app that will return all the categories that we have in our menu as a JSON string. And we have a couple of URLs that are just paths to our snippets. One is the categories title snippet, and the other one is the category single snippet.html. The insert HTML you've seen before showing show loading you've seen before as well. One you haven't seen yet is insert property. Well, remember this snippet right here, category snippet.html, somehow we're going to grab this as a string, right? We're going to grab that uh, using Ajax request. And then we have this entire HTML as a string. Well, we need to then substitute every property that has these mustache or curly braces around, double curly braces around it. We need to substitute it with a value. Well, this is the function that's going to do it. It's called insert property. And I'm asking it for a string, the property name, and the property value. So this is the string where we're going to insert things into. The property name, property value, and it's going to return, as a return value, it's going to return the string already with those property values inserted instead of the property names there. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to set up, first of all, the property name. Remember those curly braces. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a replace function of the string class and use a regular expression object, except we're not really going to use any kind of a fancy regular expression. It's just going to be the property to replace that property that we've set up. So just the 
verbatim string that we've set up, we want that replaced. And the only reason we're using this regular expression is because we want to specify this flag G, which just tells us, go ahead and replace it everywhere you find in this in this string right here. So not just the first place you find, but everywhere you find. So since we have, for example, in this category snippet, we have this name property showing up quite a few places here. We don't want it to replace just the first one it finds. We want to replace all of them. And here's the property value with which you should replace that particular string. Once we're done with that, we return the string and we're good to go. So this is how we're going to take the string, the snippet, and we're going to populate it with property values. Okay, so scrolling on down, we have the Ajax send request. That is for the main content that we've seen before. And here's our load menu categories function that is going to get triggered in order to pull all these categories into the page. So the way we're doing it is, again, we're first going to show our loading icon. And usually on these sites, the server is going to be fast enough that you're probably not even going to notice that loading icon kind of flashing and going away. But if the sites get a little slower or the data comes back a little slower, you will eventually see it. And we're making our Ajax request afterwards, and we're using our old categories URL. That's the URL to our Heroku app. And we're passing build and show categories HTML. That is a value of a function that is defined actually right here. And since we don't really need the true right here, it is default, which is going to go ahead and leave it off, which means that this function right here will get categories, will get whatever that is the first argument in the function is. It's going to be a object that is converted from the JSON string. So it's going to be a full-blown object. So once this HS call is done and this function is called, we end up here. But we're not done with Ajax just yet, right? First, we need to go ahead and request the category's title HTML. That is that snippet from OHTML that just gets the category. And we need that string in order to append it to the rest of it. So once we get that string, we really are not ready to do much with it yet. We need to make yet another Ajax request and notice that that Ajax request is sitting inside of this one because it only makes sense to make the second one when the first one is actually over and we are in the context such that we could grab the result of the first one. So there it is. So technically speaking, this would be the third Ajax request we're making. And we're making that request to get the category HTML. And that's that snippet, category snippet.html. And once we're done, we have all three pieces of data that we need. We have the categories object that is lists all the categories. We have the title of the page, the snippet of the title of the page as a string. And we have a single category HTML snippet that we can now use. So all we need to do now is maybe call some function like build categories view HTML. So now we're actually building the view, pass it the categories object, pass it our title snippet, and pass it our actual category snippet. And we're going to go ahead and build that view, store it inside a variable. And once we're done with that, and that is a synchronous call, there's nothing asynchronous about this, it's just synchronous call, we're going to use our insert HTML to place it inside the element with ID main content. And there's that string that we're placing inside of it. And notice both Ajax calls, this one and this one, both pass false because we don't want the Ajax utility to try to process our snippet, our HTML snippets, as JSON. So let's go ahead and take a look at this build categories view HTML. Well, it's a pretty simple function. It goes ahead and builds up our final HTML snippet by grabbing the categories first. Remember, we need to put that whole thing into a row. So remember that section piece is not really here anymore because it only comes once and there's a whole bunch of these that are supposed to happen. So that is what's happening here. We're inserting a, sec a section with a class row and then we're looping over our categories object. And every time we pull out the name, the short name, and all we're doing then is just insert property. Remember that insert property function we discussed? Well, this is what where it's coming very handy. We insert property and every place where there is a name property inside our snippet, it gets replaced with the value name. Same for short name. Finally, we're done and we're looping over this every single time. And notice that every time we're copying the category HTML, that's that snippet that has the properties in it into HTML which means we're separating. Remember the pass by value, pass by reference? Well, this is copy by value, which means this is a copy that is not connected to this anymore. So every time through the loop, we get a new copy of it right here 
and then we can insert the new values to it once again. And once we're done, we just return our final HTML that's built up. We close the section tag, and then it goes back right here, what we spoke about before, and that just inserts that inside our main content. And that's how we get to this place right here, where when we go to the front page and click on this menu, it executes a function that pulls in all of this right here into our page. So now we're done with the many categories page, and it's time to move on to a single category page. So when a user clicks on a soup category or appetizers category, they should be able to see all the menu items for that particular category. And that's what we're gonna code up next.